uh, that there's some kind of teaching program going on here and, and that it is external to us in some way. And this is, you asked earlier about DNA. Why does DNA figure so much in my work? I was looking for a solution to this mystery. Why do people from all over the world experience the same things in, in altered states of consciousness? The best explanation, I believe, uh, is that we are dealing with freestanding parallel dimensions which our consciousness is able to enter in these states. But another possibility that has to be looked at is that this information, this teaching program that is unleashed by these plants may in some way be imprinted on our DNA, something that all human beings have in common. Uh, and if it were imprinted on our DNA, then that would explain why the same teachings are given to everybody. It doesn't matter if it's 35,000 years ago or today, a kind mm -hmm. of interactive uh, teaching program. And so, uh, I investigated that possibility as well. You know, we can understand why useful everyday abilities might be hardwired into our DNA. For example, so-called intuitive physics. Uh, if you were to throw, a, if we were in the same room and you were to throw a rock at me, uh, I could step out of the way, hopefully, and avoid that rock. Right. And it and in so doing, uh, I would actually be bringing into bear hardwired knowledge. My brain would be doing tremendous mathematical calculations, trajectory, mass, speed, all <laughs> kinds of trigonometry. I wouldn't even know it. I would just step out of the way. And we can understand and, and why... Happen, yeah. Yeah, one can understand why evolution has given us this uh, intuitive physics, as it's called. But why should evolution give every human being on the planet, once they enter an altered state of consciousness, a brain module for beings that appear to be half animal and half human, that teach very specific information to us? Information, by the way, that's been taught to scientists. Francis Crick, the Nobel Prize winner, who won the Nobel Prize for discovering the structure of DNA itself, admitted shortly before his death in 2004 that he had been un under the influence of LSD when he first saw the double helix pattern. It was a teaching given to him uh, in, in, in a vision. So the other, the other possibility that we have to consider is that some intelligence may have written this information onto our DNA, perhaps written it on the first DNA, uh, that, uh, that ever appeared on this planet, and it has been conserved and passed down ever since across billions of years of evolution until finally a creature evolved that was able to read that information, and that creature is us, and in order to read it, we need to be in altered states of consciousness. But to explain that parallel inquiry that I undertake in Supernatural, I need to tell you a little bit more uh, about the amazing Nobel Prize winner, Francis Crick, and mm -hmm. the extraordinary ideas he had about how and why life first started on this planet. And I mentioned one astonishing fact about Francis Crick, which he admitted shortly before his death in 2004, uh, which is that uh, he was under the influence of a hallucinogen, under the influence of LSD, when he first saw the double helix structure of DNA. So this vision, this teaching came to him uh, in an altered state of consciousness. Now, later in his life, in fact, in the 1980s, this Nobel Prize winner, Francis Crick, published an extraordinary book called Life Itself, uh, in which he argues from a scientific point of view that life, uh, the DNA molecule, which is the essence of life, could not have got started by accident on this planet. He didn't believe it could. He compared it to, he said it's about as likely that, you, you know this idea of the primeval soup and molecules accidentally bumping it against each other, producing life, which so many of our scientists mm -hmm, like? Sure. Crick compared that to, he thought that was about as likely uh, as, the assembly, as the assembly of a fully functioning jumbo jet by a hurricane in a junkyard. Uh, it is just such an extraordinarily complicated molecule, the DNA molecule, and its relationship to the proteins uh, equally complicated. So to cut a long story short, he suggested it was sent here by an alien civilization from the other side of the universe uh, who faced certain doom, perhaps, as a result of a supernova explosion. They sought to preserve the essence of life, and so they sent bacteria out into the universe in spaceship, spaceships loaded with DNA. Those bacteria, uh, one of those spaceships crashed into the early Earth this theory is Crick's theory. It's called directed panspermia. Uh, it's, it's cargo of bacteria spilled out and started reproducing and evolving uh, and eventually became us. And that's honestly how Francis Crick, the Nobel Prize winner, saw the beginning of life on this planet. Now, if by chance he was right, 
and we can't dismiss that, the man won a Nobel Prize, after all, for the study of DNA, then we have to consider another possibility, which is that that supposed civilization on the other side of the galaxy that sent DNA to this planet may have genetically engineered that DNA. It's recently been discovered that DNA is a fantastic recording medium. Uh, patents are being taken out all over the world to use DNA as a recording device, uh, that it would be possible to record vast quantities of information on DNA. Right now, today, our scientists can record 100-word songs on DNA, and it's been done on the DNA of the E. coli bacteria. But the evidence suggests that its storage capacity is limitless, perhaps even enough to record the entire knowledge of a civilization. So that's the idea that maybe on so-called junk DNA, which is 97% of our DNA, only 3% of our DNA is involved in genes. The rest we don't know what it does, and, it, and the scientists call it junk DNA. Maybe that re contains and has contained since the beginning of evolution recorded messages, interactive recorded information from our makers waiting for the evolution of a creature that would be able to understand those messages and decode them. And the suggestion is, that creature is us, and the decoding method is altered states of consciousness. So this is a, a parallel possibility okay. that, I, it, that I review in Supernatural, along with the possibility that spirit worlds are real, which I repeat is my favorite of the two possibilities.